cleanse our minds out of ignorance and the other delusions that spring from it, such as attachment, jealousy, pride, and hatred, which obscure our mind's clear light nature and are the actual cause of all the suffering we experience, and to develop desirable attributes such as love, compassion, tranquility, concentration, and divine intelligence, and all these things are the cause of all happiness. That's what Buddhism is all about. And generally speaking, there's, there's two types of meditation techniques possible. Or, or modes of meditation. They, they work together. One is called analytical meditation, and the other one is concentrative meditation, or uh, placement meditation. In analytical meditation, that's where we, we use our logical reasoning to examine and learn as much as we can and understand as much as we can of, of an object that we're meditating on. And in concentrative meditation, we're just uh, learning to stay focused on that object. So you can see how they work together. Because the, the better we can analyze, the greater our conviction for practicing concentration. And trying to overcome the obstacles to success. Then the better our concentration, the stronger our powers of logical deduction and the clearer the conclusions we reach. So what's the point of all this? Why make all this effort? So we all want to be happy and none of us want to suffer. So that's why we meditate. How could just meditating make us happy? Well, uh, where does suffering arise? It all arises in our mind. So in meditation, we're looking at our mind and seeing how, how it works, how it, how it feels. Because we rarely find happiness we desire. And when we do, it doesn't last and usually isn't as good as we hope it would be. So true happiness is in the mind. So, like, like I mentioned before, there's two kinds of being with mind. Sentient beings, whose minds are ignorant, and enlightened beings, from whose minds every last trace of ignorance has been ex eradicated. So sentient beings are also two types. Those in cyclic existence, samsara, and those free of it. Within cyclic existence, there are six realms. Three lower, the animal, hungry, ghost, and hell realms. And three upper, the human, demigod, and god realms. Most sentient beings have been in cyclic existence, dying in one realm and being reborn in another since beginningless time. Beyond this wheel of life, there are two states of existence. Individual liberation and the full enlightenment of Buddhahood. The point of Tibetan Buddhist meditation the ultimate point of all Buddhism, in fact, is for all sentient beings to attain enlightenment. But enlightenment can be attained only through individual effort. We have to do it for ourselves. God or Buddha cannot do it for us. The way to enlightenment is to follow the path that leads to it. The first thing to understand is that all be it all begins with motivation. So whether an action becomes positive karma, the cause of happiness, or negative karma, the cause of suffering, depends on why it's done. All action done with attachment to the happiness in this al a life alone, actions done simply for the comfort of this life are negative. The karmic imprint such actions leave on the consciousness eventually ripen into an experience of suffering. Actions done with the motivation of experiencing happiness in a future life, actions done with detachment from this life are positive. The imprints they leave ripen into happiness. There are three kinds of positive action. 
three levels of positive motivation. The first is seeking happiness in a future life within cyclic ex existence. Rebirth in the upper realms or ordinary temporary samsaric happiness of one kind or another. The second is seeking complete liberation from cyclic existence for oneself alone. And the third is seeking enlightenment for the sake of all sentient beings. Understanding that in the final analysis, all happiness comes from other sentient beings and that it is one's individual responsibility to lead them all to the highest happiness of enlightenment. Action then with any of these three levels of motivation, plant the seeds of harmonious results. But in Tibetan Buddhist meditation, you always stress the importance of the third or highest level of motivation, which is known by its Sanskrit name Bodhicitta. Everything we do should be motivated by the supreme altruism of wanting our sentient beings enlightened. If it is, we ourselves automatically also experience good results. This paradox, if you want to experience the greatest happiness, forget about yourself and devote yourself solely to the happiness of others, is what the holiness his Holiness the Dalai Lama calls wise selfishness. Since we're going to be selfish, we might as well be smart about it. Thus, the benefit of our actions is not determined by the action itself, but by our motivation for doing it. If, for example, we meditate for selfish reasons, or for some mundane goals such as tranquility now, even though it might look as though we're doing something spiritual, in fact, because of the worldly motivation behind it, the action will leave a negative imprint on our mind and is therefore the cause of suffering. Thus, Tibetan Buddhism teaches us to do everything with compassion, thinking about the suffering of others and wanting to alleviate it. In this way too, then everyday actions uh, such as sleeping, eating and working can be transformed into the cause of enlightenment. Analytical meditation is usually practiced on teachings from the graduated path to enlightenment. So, uh, you should check it out. It's called Lam Rim. L-A-M-R-I-M. Google it. <clears throat> Basically, what it is, is like uh, 21 uh, topics for meditation. And they're arranged in a sequence from more basic to more advanced, you could say. But not exactly, but they, they just work together in such a way that it, it pushes, pushes you along in, into making the whole sequence a, a one big meditation towards enlightenment. And so you practice uh, each one for a certain period of time, like it could be a month, uh, or it could be a week, or it could be a day, or however it is, then, then you do the next one for that same amount of time and so on until you go through all 21 and then go back to the beginning. That's the Lam Rain series or sequence of meditation. So check it out. Uh, now, so that's analytical meditation. Now, concentrative meditation, it starts with learning to focus on the breath. And this, you can think of it. As